So this right here was kind of like, you know, therapy. I was able to let it out. There are so many people with their own stories and philosophies. We all walk our own paths and go through different things in our lifetime. What bonds us is when we take a second to slow down and relate to others through their emotions, experiences, and wisdom. Hello everyone, my name is Esteban. My goal is for us to learn from the many lives and the many feelings of others. I will ask these people random questions which they have no prior knowledge of, with the intent of engaging their opinions and thoughts which will provide a perspective of truth and knowledge to all of us. What's going on, Esteban? My name is Jose, um, and I'm glad to be here, man. Okay, so let's start off with if you could snap your fingers and have something changed about yourself instantly, what would that be? Um, I would honestly say the depression that I go through. I think, I think you know, I've had it often. Well, I've had it for. I think ever since like my like early teenage years, um, as I got older, you know, I think everything in life kind of started to kind of hit me and, you know, kind of like put me into certain moods. Um, and then I think when I lost my father about six, five years ago, I think that really kind of shifted my like whole thought process in life, you know, and, you know, I would have good days. I have bad days, but, you know, I think. You know, I have a lot better days now, but I still wish that there was times that I could just snap my finger and be like, hey, like, I can just move on and not feel down for the day or, you know, just kind of just in that mindset sometimes. Mm, I feel that. No, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, do you feel like because you've had that depression for some time um, that not giving into it, like looking back and not giving into it? now it was worth it like all that struggle and all that fight uh yes and no mm -hmm. um i think you know like i had to learn from what i went through right um i you know like any young man growing up it's you know we were told not to go to therapy you know we were you know told you gotta you know bottle everything up or you know you gotta drink it away or you gotta do drugs or whatever the case may be and I think as I got older and, you know, like, I would really say like, like, you know, like over the past five years, I really was just like, you know what? Therapy is not that bad. Right. Um, being honest about who you really are, being honest about what you want to do in life, taking the risks, having the opportunities, but also seeking the help, you know, having the support system. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's just a yes and no type question. <laughs> No, that makes sense. I mean, depression is, you know, it's complicated. So sometimes it's not a yes or no, right? So yeah. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what is a bad habit you have that has been hard to change? Um, change. Change is a very hard habit for me. I think change is very fearful because I don't know what, you know, the next thing is going to be. Um, I think over the years I've gotten better at it. I think I've taken the risks. I've tried to do things outside of my comfort zone. Um, you know, and great example of that is that, you know, I was very much having the mindset that I was going to stick to this job that I was in when I was living in, uh, New York city. And I was like, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. And I'm gonna live in this little apartment for the rest of my life. And, you know, like it was just very much, I didn't want to leave my space um, because of a lot of reasons. But then one day I was just like, you know what? I have an opportunity. I have a chance to to be better, become better, um, be with somebody that will support me, somebody that will love me unconditionally. I should just pack it all up and just leave. So, you know, it took me 30, what? I've been here 37, I'll be 38 this year. So it took me almost... 35 years of my life to kind of be like, you know what, it's okay to like change, but yeah, change is probably the most hardest thing for me. Um, why do you feel that now um, you're able to do that a little better than before? I think because I've learned that everything that I thought I can control, I couldn't control anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And everybody around me is going to grow. Right. 
And am I just going to sit around and just be 60, 70 years old and say that I wish I did it? Or am I going to be 35 years old and show my kids, hey, you know what? You could do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. You can you can go see the world. You can do all these type of things. And there's no regrets. There's no fear. Just go do it. You know, I think one of the things and, you know, going back to my dad is it's like, you know, there was a conversation that I had with him. I will say about maybe a year before he died, but he pretty much is like, you know, leave, just leave the city, leave this house, leave your job, go. And I always took that as like, like, oh, like, like, you know, like you're just kicking me out and, you know, like, you know, you guys don't want me around. But then it's like I took, a, you know, like after he passed, I kind of took that moment and I was just like, you know what? That was the best advice that he gave me. And I wish I would have listened to it mm. because I know that my son will be OK in New York. He has a, you know, good support system for him. My son will be OK. And as long as I'm in my son's life, whether I'm a thousand miles away, whether I'm two miles away, my son will be okay. And as long as I'm there with my son and I'm showing him that dad loves him, dad is there to support him, dad is there to be there at eight o'clock in the morning, be there for school, even if it takes me seven hours, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. But you know what? Everything will be okay. Awesome. No, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I'm gonna say that it's just weird. I haven't spoken to you in a while, so I didn't know these details, but that's the exact same thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh, my child is still in New York. I only have one biological child. I have two stepkids that I raised since they were little. Um, but, you know, uh, it was very hard to leave her behind. Mm -hmm. But I needed to leave. And I, I kind of came to the same conclusion that I I left as she was turning 15. So I've been part of her life almost on a regular basis, almost on a daily basis uh, since she was little. Um, but, you know, knowing that we built that foundation, you know, we can make it work. And it's, I've already been here about an hour and a half, an hour, sorry, a, a year and a half. <laughs> and um, yeah, I really feel like um, we are able to maintain some type of relationship just as close as when I was 15 minutes away. So, right. mm -hmm. yeah, man. What do you think is the right way to live your life? And, and not necessarily just you, but like, let's say collectively you, right? So all of us. I would say live your life as open-minded as possible. Um, and I say that because where a lot of us come from, a lot of us come from these neighborhoods where it's very closed-minded. It's very much like, you know, you're either going to do something bad or something bad is going to happen to you. And if you don't look at the world as like, hey, I can go do this or I can go travel the world or, hey, I can be something different or I can do something different, then you'll never change. You have an open mind and you're willing to look outside of your world and you're willing to look outside of that little square box neighborhood and you're willing to see what's down the block and what's across the river and what's two hours away you're going to open up your mind to a whole lot of things and you're going to see the world differently. What's a tradition that you love and cherish in your life? Um, I would definitely say um, hmm. um, I think just having all my family together. I think what I've learned over time is, you know, uh, um, time is long, but life is short. And how can I have my kids around me as much as I can? So I think the little things that like we do. So, you know, I think since I've been a kid, it's my mom and dad, they would always get these big trees, these like big real life, like Christmas trees, these things couldn't even fit inside of, you know, our apartment. Like I, I, I remember they had to cut it down and try to get it through the projects and <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and I say all that because it's like, you know, like I moved out of New York and like, that was the first tradition that I was like, you know what, like I'm going to keep. And I have this like big room that now fits like a 13 foot tree. So now I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I'm gonna get that 13, 14 foot tree, but it's something that, you know, my son remembers from, you know, just from his grandparents once we were living out there. And I'm like, mm. you know, 
we're going to continue that tradition just with, you know, you know, now with everybody else and we're going to continue doing that. But yeah, just, you know, things like that, family vacations, road trips, you know, all that type of good stuff. Nice. Let's do the last one, which is uh, what is your biggest goal? Biggest goal is to leave my kids with a legacy that would inspire them to change the world. So no money, nothing can amount to that. But if I could leave that legacy and that foundation and let them know that they can do it, I left, you know, that's that is my goal in life. All right. Well, I appreciate you answering these questions. Jose. I really, you know, appreciate any time we have a conversation together. Your insight is great. Um, if there's anything that you want to promote and um, maybe give the audience a little send off as well, please. Yeah. Um, just if you guys want, follow my company, Solar Tree. Um, we are part of Power Street Theater here in Philadelphia. They are a nonprofit organization that um, focuses on BIPOC artists from all over Philadelphia and all over the world. So if you guys can support us, uh, support Power Street Theater, support Solar Tree, um, Esteban, thank you so much for, you know, giving me this time. And uh, yeah, um, I would say this, just live your truth, live your life. Um, don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do something or you can't be something that you want to be in life. Life is too short. Life is, you know, too fragile. Do what you got to do and just enjoy your life.